from the front row will make it even scarier. How many times have you seen it? Only about a dozen or so, but it's been ages since the last time. Nearly a month. <coughs> Come on, Fang, you promised you'd be brave this time. <coughs> Pay special attention to the first scene. It's very important. On the other side of the spiritual divide wells a force too evil to comprehend, too dastardly to abide by the rules of flesh and blood. Beware the hidden hand of the Netherworld. Uh, is this part of the movie, Mona? Definitely not. And look up there! <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties, folks. Everyone will get a free pass to another movie here at the Sabbath. A free pass, huh? Oh, well, I guess we'll just have to come back tomorrow. Come on, Fang! Wow, there's a lot fewer people here than last night. It is only Bride of the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Even Fang didn't want to come. Oh no, not again! <laughs> now you'll really get a taste of the evil of the Unseen Hand. <laughs> There's clearly some sort of supernatural activity happening. We'd better warn Mr. Golder. I'm awfully sorry, sir. I, I don't know what happened. Please come again. Jasper, have a look at those curtains. And can you please take care of that fallen lamp? Hello, Mr. Golder. Oh, hi, Mona. I guess you want a refund, too. Actually, we'll take another free pass. But do you mind if we look around? I suspect some creepy forces may be at work. Okay, Mona, but be careful. Don't worry. We've got lots of experience with this sort of thing. Whoa. Looks like this place hasn't been cleaned since it opened. Ugh, yeah. I guess that's why he hired the new janitor. Uh, uh, that room looks like a good place to start. So what are we looking for? Anything that suggests the presence of a blood-curdling visitor from the netherworld. You know, the usual. How about this hockey card from 1978? His haircut is pretty scary. Uh, not quite what we're after, Charlie. <laughs> ah! Hey, what do you know? It's one of the reels of the Ghost of Greenville. This must be the spot where the film broke the other night. And look at this empty frame. Right where the Ghost of Greenville makes his first appearance in the... <gasps> Whoa! That was...
sounds strange. It's him. The Greenville ghost is on the loose. <laughs> he went down the stairs. Now you know my little secret, but it won't do you any good. <laughs> Oh, hi, kids. What's the rush? You look like you just saw the ghost of Greenville. <laughs> uh, not quite, but we do have a few leads. <sighs> I'll probably have to sell this place if this keeps up. They'll probably turn it into one of those multiplex cinemas with a dozen screens the size of a postage stamp. Those darn fuses again. This whole place is becoming a hazardous area. Jasper, have a look at that fuse box, will you? Okay, we better get going. Thanks, Mr. Golder. It's all starting to make sense. That explosion with the fuse box timed perfectly with the broken film must have released the Greenville ghost. So that's who's haunting the Seville cinema? Uh-huh. Looks like we have some ghost busting to do. We've got to help poor Mr. Golder, or he'll have to close down. There's no time to lose. I'd better fill you in on the plot of the movie on the way home. The story begins when lightning strikes Greenville Manor, and then Percival the butler starts acting strange. Poor Mr. Golder. I remember when Return of the Curse of the Nephew of the Bride of Frankenstein used to really pack them in. The Seville is so dangerous, no one will come near it. We can't give up on Mr. Golder now. We're his only hope. If we do get another visit from our phantom friend, these glasses should help us see his three-dimensional form a bit better. <gasps> Get your flashlights on! <laughs> Don't you like the Greenville ghost walls? Let's get him! Where'd he go? He just disappeared. Let's get our glasses on. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Mona? Kids? Are you all right? That player piano give you a fright? <laughs> I didn't even know it was still working. <laughs> Come on, popcorn's on me. Oh no, what a mess. I could have sworn I turned these off. Now, where's that Jasper? Jasper! Mr. Golder, I... I don't know how to put this, but I think the ghost of Greenville is haunting your cinema. You think? <laughs> that could explain my ticket sales. We have to protect this temple of creepiness from the unseen forces. Hmm, yes. The historical society will try to save this building. Hello? Hello? Who's there? Are you ready to give up? The cinema will soon be mine, and there's nothing you can do. It was another anonymous threat to take over the cinema. Strange, I thought that was only an internal line. What is it, Mona? Call it a hunch. <laughs> Cleaning products. Just as I suspected. I don't get it. Well, remember the movie? The Greenville ghost posed as the butler when he performed his dastardly deeds. So who would the ghost disguise himself as at the cinema? You mean the janitor? Exactly. Haven't you noticed how he always seems to be around right before something happens? So he must have made that call. Let's go to the projection room. I have an idea. This is a scene from the ghost of Greenville, the final chapter, when he's defeated once and for all. Who's that? The Wizard of Wentworth, the Greenville Ghost's nemesis. One touch from his wooden staff and we'll be rid of that ghostly nuisance for good. Tonight may be our last chance to put a stop to the Greenville Ghost and save the Seville. But in case the wizard fails, we'll need some special equipment to do battle with him. I have my cinematic phantom paralyzer. And I have the vocal modulator device. Good work. We better get going. The movie starts soon. I can barely see from way up here. We need to be near the projectors. 3D glasses, everyone. Looks like tonight's the last show, kiddies. <laughs> Quick, Charlie, get that other film going. I 
it banish thee and makest thee flesh and blood. Oh no, the bolt went out, and he didn't touch him with the staff. We'll just have to finish the job ourselves. Excuse me, sir. I'll explain later. Hearth of fire and pit of earth, I banish thee and makest thee flesh and blood. Huh? Huh? <laughs> the quick dissolve! The great director von Steinberg taught me that maneuver. Young lady. <laughs> Time for plan B, guys. Quick! Cut! That's a wrap. No. I make us the flesh and blood! No! Ah, there you are! Good news! The Historical Society named us a heritage site and sent along a check for renovations. Wow, Yay! that's great! Say, have any of you seen Jasper? Uh, I have a feeling you won't be seeing him around anymore. You know, I did some checking up on him. Turns out that he used to work for the Multiplex people. I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't behind some of those mishaps. Really? You don't say. It looks like everyone in town is here for the grand reopening. I hope we get a front row seat. What's playing? The guppy that ate Pittsburgh. And I came prepared this time. Just in case. Where's Fang? My mom thought he wouldn't really enjoy going on a ski trip. I can't wait to try out my new snowboard. This is going to be fun. Look, George, my new electronic snowboard has a remote control feature. I just push this button and... Cool, huh? It was very expensive. I want to get a picture of the Yeti, if we see him. Yeti? You mean like Bigfoot? The Sasquatch? No, Yeti. The Abominable Snowman? He's Bigfoot's cousin. The Yeti really likes winter, and up here in the mountains, it's snowy almost all year. The Yeti could be anywhere at the top of any mountain. You're just always trying to make things scary. Well, you're not scaring me with all your monsters and poltergeezer thingies and... Hey! What's that? Fang, you did come along. Welcome to the Futtlesnuff Ski Lodge. I'm Mr. Futtlesnuff. I want everyone to have fun, fun, fun. Charlie, duck! <gasps> oh, you are gonna get it, Charlie. It wasn't me. It was George. <laughs> No snowballs here, and there will be no skiing at all if you're not better behaved. I'm Victor, your ski patroller, and I don't much like kids or cats. So keep out of trouble and stay out of my way. He doesn't like kids, and he's our ski patroller? Whoa, he's friendly. Well, I'll be sure to tell him these snowballs were all your fault. Okay, everyone, no fooling around. Stick to the main trails. Anyone caught throwing snowballs will be kicked off the hill. No jokes, no pranks, no laughing. I wonder if we're allowed to ski. Remember to keep a lookout for any Yeti footprints. No! <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> Lily can't ski! Yikes! Whoa! Look! Yeti footprints! 
footprints. Weird. They kind of look like snowshoe tracks. Of course they do. See? They're deep in the snow because the Yeti is so heavy. And the steps are far apart because the Yeti has such long legs and runs so fast. And the tracks lead over here and... Looks like the Yeti tried to bury us in that snow. Yeah. Maybe he didn't like us following him. Uh-oh. Here comes Mr. Happy. What are you kids doing here? I told you, stay on the main trails. Now get back over there. But we saw... we saw... Um, Bird. I don't care what you saw. Stay away from the North Plateau. <laughs> Maybe he knows about the Yeti and is just trying to keep us safe. Hey, look at that big guy. He kind of reminds me of the Yeti. I don't know. Maybe he's a friend of the Yeti. This afternoon, we better take a really good look around. I'm stuck. We should have cheese fondue for lunch every day. I wish I'd had my camera ready before, when we saw the Yeti. Or maybe it was that big tall guy we saw. If we follow the footprints, we can get a picture and prove it's the Yeti. But that guy Victor told us to stay away from there. <laughs> Mr. Funnel Snuff, is it okay if we ski around the North Plateau? Victor said we shouldn't because it's dangerous. Well, Victor's still a little new to the ski hill. It's very safe over there. I'll have a word with him. You kids just go have fun. Here are the Yeti prints. Let's follow them. Maybe we shouldn't, but we have to solve this mystery. We just need some proof. Hey, look! I got a picture. I'd hate to run into him on a dark, snowy night. Oh, no. I guess I was so excited I shook the camera. It's like he was watching us. Or maybe he was waiting for us. <laughs> it's getting dark. We better head back to the ski lodge. This is great. Yum. Cheese fondue for dinner. And who would have thought? All you can eat chocolate fondue for dessert. Mr. Fuddlesnuff, this afternoon we saw this big guy talking to Victor. Oh, that must have been Mountain Bill. He was the best ski patroller I ever had. But he doesn't work for you anymore? Nope. Victor found evidence that Mountain Bill was chopping down trees and probably selling them to logging companies. Do you know where Mountain Bill lives? I think he lives up on one of the neighboring mountains. Do you think they have any more chocolate fondue in the kitchen? Haven't you sometimes lain awake at night wondering why no one has ever caught the Yeti? Or even gotten a picture of him? <gasps> Not till now. Maybe the Yeti can transform into a human in order to fit in. <gasps> and then when he goes home or no one is around, he turns back into the Yeti. And remember Mr. Fuddlesnuff said that Mountain Bill lives up on a mountain. Lily? But what bugs me is, why would the Yeti chop down trees? Well, if it's like you say, if the Yeti hides out as a human, then maybe his human side likes chopping down trees. Hey, there's Victor. And someone else. I'll get a picture. I don't like that Victor guy much, but if the Yeti is following him, Maybe we should keep an eye on things. So is there now photographic proof that the Yeti exists? Oh, we were too far away. And we're gonna be leaving tomorrow. So today, we have to get a picture. So, Vampire Girl, did you get a picture yet? Of that monster that doesn't really exist? <laughs> She'll see when I get the picture. tracks must be Victor's, and these snowshoe tracks must be the Yeti's. Let's go! Okay, 
one goes this way and one goes that way. Victor's probably safe, so we can go get a... That's a chainsaw! Maybe the Yeti is cutting down trees! I'm not so sure. It's Victor and some lumberjacks. So Mountain Bill hasn't really been cutting down trees. I bet it's been Victor and his buddies all along. Wait until Mr. Fuddlesnuff sees this. Hey, it's those kids. Uh-oh, we'd better get out of here. And fast. I have to get that photo. This way, to the hill. <laughs> Working with Victor. They're both after us. Oh, Isom! You little troublemakers! Yay! Go! Good shot! I think he was trying to show us what Victor was up to. And before, he probably tried to warn us about the snow that fell out of the tree. And he was only chasing us because he thought we might get into trouble running from Victor. But don't you want to prove to the whole world that the Yeti exists? Not anymore. If people knew the Yeti was up here, thousands of them would come looking for him. He'd never get a moment's peace. I want to thank you kids for being so alert. And I want you to know I've rehired Mountain Bill, my old ski patroller. So, Vampire Girl, did you get a picture of the Yeti yet? No, I didn't. Because there's no such thing as a Yeti. I could have told you that. <laughs> Ready, steady, go! 